We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. You all must be so hungry because you've gone <laughs> without brunch talk for so long. We are starving as well. We're finally back to feed you with a brand new season of brunch talk where we answer your burning dating questions. We gave you little snacks, tidbits of the best of brunch talk to keep you there. But I agree, we are hungry for some new questions. And we were going through all the reviews and there are so many. So we're excited that we have so much content to dive right into. I love that you're like, we gave you guys snacks. We did. We gave you stuff to teasers to snack (laughs) on. It's like the definition of a toxic relationship. It's like, (laughs) I'm going to starve you. But look, I gave you some breadcrumbs. Oh, we're not toxic. No, just kidding. (laughs) We're not toxic. No, we're very generous with our brunch talk. We have so much to dive into, which is why we're going to dive into this question already. The question is, how do you tell your date that they're talking too much? I love this one. And then for more (laughs) context, this came in from a review. So thank you. It said, I'm struggling with what appears to be a common theme of over talking and sometimes trauma dumping Mm -hmm. and limited to no curiosity in me. And I leave the date exhausted. I'm curious how you would advise me and others on this topic. Yeah. So... (laughs) I like to look at this from a few different perspectives. I know that some people get nervous on dates and that manifests into talking a lot because you feel like you have to (laughs) fill the dead air, you know, like there shouldn't be silence at all. And then other people just don't have the awareness that it's a conversation. They just really want to get some stuff out and they kind of treat it like a therapy session in some ways. So on the receiving end, yes, this can be very daunting, but first is to step back and let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say they're nervous. So Come at it from that perspective. I agree with you. There's so much more here that like is beyond the surface here of what you think. I agree. There's like the dates that I've been on before, the one man shows or one woman show. (laughs) We don't want to discriminate. We're just, you know, they're there to entertain, to show the resume. And I do think this doesn't always come from like a narcissistic perspective. Sometimes it's just like, no, I think this is how dating works and I want to put my best foot forward and people people will like me this way. And it's misguided, but it's not coming from a bad place. Other times, people just want a platform to talk about themselves. Yeah. That could also be a very viable reason. The therapy session part, I think too, we've been told over and over again, you need to be vulnerable. And that sometimes translates into a therapy session. I'm saying all this is because there's so many conflicted messages of how you're supposed to act on dates. It doesn't always equate that this person's a bad person or they are not going to be a good partner. That being said, if you're in it, it can be really hard and it doesn't foster connection. I remember being on dates where people did not ask me anything. There was one guy, I remember for two Mm -hmm. drinks, we sat there and he just talked. And then we're about to get the third drink and he's like, 
so tell me about you. And by then I'm like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, there isn't going to be a third drink. We've sat here for now two hours and you haven't asked me a single thing. That does not feel good at all. So I want to empathize with the person that wrote it. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. But part of it, the onus should be partly on you to insert yourself in the conversation. Yeah. Some people just don't know how to pause. I mean, we see this even on our podcast, sometimes we have guests who just yes. talk because they think that's what they're supposed yes. to do. So we have to do the unthinkable, which is to interrupt them. It's not to be rude. It's just to insert ourselves into the conversation. And that could be saying something along the lines of, oh, I experienced that too, or I hear where you're coming from, or, oh, that reminds me of something. Mm -hmm. That gives a nice little break for the other person to pause and say, oh, yeah, there is another person in this conversation. Yeah. And it can be hard. I know you and I have talked about this, way that we both struggle with, you know, if people aren't asking us questions, just inserting ourselves. Totally. Yeah. And I definitely think it's hard and I like the opening. So I agree with you though. Now, knowing what I know from doing this podcast, I would probably try to insert myself a little more. That being said, if it still feels unnatural or you're just not getting the response, even by doing that, of getting that follow-up, it also could be a sign that this is just not like a compatible match too. like some of it. Yes. Yeah. First date jitters, nerves, all that. I'm kind of thinking about that date that you went on with Andrew that we refer to a lot mm -hmm. when he called you in, we'll say called you in and was like, mm -hmm. I feel like you're kind of in this entertainment mode and I want to connect with you. I feel like doing something like that, like stopping and being like, hey, like I know first dates can be awkward. They can be uncomfortable. Like I feel like we're not maybe connecting the way that we would if we were more comfortable with each other. Like how can we like refresh this a little and like make it more of like a team thing. And then if someone is just caught up in this, they'll recognize it. And if they truly are this way, then they'll just be like, oh, what are you talking about? And then you have your answer. So what he did on that date with me, that was, I think I would take this into any date or interview or conversation I have with someone is that he made a slight shift. Mm -hmm. What we were shifting was we're going from drinks to dinner. Mm. So we're about to have a location change. And he said, before we go to dinner, I just want to let you know, like, it's been really fun getting yeah. to know you, but I feel like I'm not getting to know the real you. So if you want to continue on to dinner, can I at least get to see and hear the real you? That was the shift he made. So on a date, if you're experiencing this, you can one, excuse yourself to go to the bathroom. Yep. That already changes the energy, right? Or look at the menu. Yep. Mention something about the menu. Or three, like literally just like interrupt. <laughs> that just remind me of something. Yeah. Interruption is okay in the circumstance because some people get in the zone and it's hard to come out of their TED talk because yeah. they're like, wait, I'm not done with my presentation. They just need a little interruption. I love what he did so much because one, it's not yeah. confrontational. It's actually quite endearing. Mm -hmm. He wants to get to know you better. Yep. So that's another piece of it. He kind of approached it, even though maybe he wasn't getting to say as much. He wasn't like, oh, I'm not saying as much. He still put it on you like, I want to connect more and get to know the real you. They're the same thing, right? Right. You're not getting questions asked back at you or you're not connecting, but it's two sides of the same coin. It's you're not connecting. Right. But the way he said it was so genius because it wasn't like, yeah. oh, UA, you're talking too much and not asking me anything. Right. He said it in a way that fostered more connection. Yeah. I am interested to get to know you, but right now I'm not knowing you right. on that level. So right. are you open to opening up? <laughs> like that one will stand with me forever. I want to go into more of, Same. you know, how do you approach this? But before we do, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN 
sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at viahemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style, spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first First month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. This episode is sponsored by Fleur. You know on the show, we're all about finding you different avenues to meet new people and find the right apps for you, especially if you're the type of person who wants to explore your sexual side and desires a bit more. Fleur is a sex-positive dating app that prioritizes women's desires. Hell yeah. Sex is not something to be ashamed of. It's probably one of the most essential components of a relationship. Yet, especially for women, there's so much shame around the topic. So we love that with Fleur, you can explore yourself in your desires with other like-minded people. And that's the key. We love how open-minded Fleur is. Whether it's for one-night stands, friends with benefits, sexting, no-strings-attached encounters, or long-term relationships. There are no forbidden desires, only mandatory respect and consent. So one of my friends tried Fleur the other day, and she absolutely loved how it felt more like a party than a dating app. She also found it fun to play the Fleur Sparks game, which is a card game in the chats that helps people on the app learn more about each other in a way that feels a bit more lighthearted and fun. So if you're looking for a new avenue that sparks passion or you just want to try something new, definitely visit Fleur.com or download Fleur in the App Store because pleasure awaits. I think especially in this example, it's prime too, because if you knew him more, you're not that type of person. Like as a friend, I know that you're someone that listens intently, but you were prime example of this is how I'm supposed to be on a date. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it might be short sighted to just discount people 100%. Yes. That being said, of course, you want to be around people that make you feel good. So we're not saying to stay in situations where it's like clearly one sided. But I love what he did because it gave gave the opportunity to turn things around. Well, you don't want to end up on the receiving end where Julie and I have been time and time again, which is like you get resentful because you don't get to speak. Yeah. And then you're just quiet because the quieter you are, mm-hmm. the more they're going to speak because right. you're trying it's to a bad fill cycle. that silence. So you taking control of the situation, you have to let them know like that's not how you want the state to go. You don't have to like let them control right. the state at all. This is such a missed opportunity because I think a lot of people aren't willing to have the conversation that he did. No. Most people are just like, uh, this person's too much, talk too much. They don't ask me. They're not introspective. They're a narcissist. Like we go to the extremes yes. instead of humanizing it a bit and being like, you know, maybe they don't know what to do. Maybe they're nervous. Like there's so much there. And how can you kind of like bring that person back to having that conversation. I think back to a first day I went on, I've talked about this one where the guy came in, told me about his ex, getting her pregnant, then making her get an abortion and all of that, right? It was like all on a first date before even having our first drink. (laughs) And I just got really resentful throughout the hour that we spent because I'm like, what a waste of my time. I'm his therapist. Yeah. And he walked away thinking it was like the best day ever. Always. Looking (laughs) back, of course, I went home and told all my friends a story. Oh my God, I went on this date with this guy that just trauma dumped his whole life on me. (laughs) But I could have, what would have been better would have been to say, wow, sounds like you've been through a lot and thank you for sharing. 
is there anything you want to know about me? Yeah. Right? Like that could have been a great opportunity to say, do you want to connect or do you just want to talk about your shit? Yeah. No, I love that. And then also, I think I've had a similar experience where I built resentment Mm -hmm. for someone that talked all about their ex on the date. Mm -hmm. And I knew about their sex life, their (laughs) financial issues, things that I should never have known about. Mm. But I just retreated and I let them keep talking. And yes, they thought it was the best date ever. I remember he's like, so we're going to continue and get like ice cream after. And I'm like, no, I'm good. And then like the next day, and I'm like, no, you. clearly need like time alone. I wish what I had said actually is like, I hear you like that there's a lot going on with your ex, but like, can we use this opportunity to get to know each other? Yeah. Because that's ultimately why we're here, right? And if you're not in that place, then like, let's just go our separate ways. Oh, I love that. Because think about it. It's not just dates. You could be with friends. Oh, totally. can't stop talking about the recent breakup and you want to be there for them. But at the same time, yes. it's your time together as friends. Yes. So it's the onus is really on you to say, I want to spend this time in a different way. Are you OK with that? It's so hard because, yeah, like it feels like that's too much, but it really isn't. It isn't. You're basically saying like, this is valuable time for the two of us. Yeah. And I want to make the most of it. What's wrong with that? But yep. I feel like as humans, we don't do that and that we retreat yeah. and that we avoid and that we don't want to ever see this person again. I know. And it could have been a really good opportunity to connect or an opportunity to just learn how to express your needs yeah. better, even if it doesn't work out. Right. Or maybe let the person realize, like I remember the guy that I went on dates with, he was telling me how none of his dates were going anywhere. Like that was part of his complaining, the one that was recently out of a relationship. Yeah. And this gives you an opportunity to be like, are you actually ready to be dating? Maybe you're still in your like X mode of healing from this, you know? So how do you, as the person who on a date who may be speaking too much, Mm -hmm. how would you know that you're doing that? Let's say the person can't give you that feedback yet. How can you kind of check yourself on a date? I mean, sometimes the person just doesn't have the self-awareness. That's possible. Yeah. But hopefully if you are listening to this podcast, you have more self-awareness than the average dater. I would look at it like, when's the last time I asked someone something? Have I been just talking Mm -hmm. for an extended period? I think there should be, you know, a conversation. It's like a volleyball, right? It goes back and forth. It's not one person just hogging the ball the entire time and never throwing it over the net. So if you find that you've been talking straight for 20 minutes and this person gets in five minutes, that's an imbalance. And I'm not saying like you have to be tit for tat thinking about it. But if you feel like the conversation isn't naturally going back and forth, like you can feel that dynamic. Yeah. Something is off balance. I often feel that in the middle of a date, if you can ask yourself, what kind of person am I on a date with? Yeah. You'll have your answer there because if you've been speaking this whole time, you'll have no idea. You could be with a serial killer for all you know because you have no idea the character of the person you're with. That's a good gut check for yourself anyway just to see if you are enjoying your time. I love that. Maybe it's just the bathroom check halfway into the date or maybe even an hour into the day because you don't know how long it's going to actually be. Yes. Go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, can I name three facts about this person Yeah. that I didn't know already for their dating profile or wherever I met them? Yes. Something new I've learned tonight. And if you're struggling, then you do not know them. It's been imbalanced. This is great. Yes. As soon as you get to the date, start drinking water so that you know your bladder can't handle it (laughs) in 10, 15 minutes. And that's your opportunity to chew a pee check. The bathroom (laughs) check, we'll call it. Let's not call it the urine (laughs) check or the pee check. (laughs) The toilet check. There you go. (laughs) They're like, what are you doing in there? You've been in there for quite some (laughs) time. Sorry, I'm just checking in with myself. I'm not pooing. I'm just checking in with myself. Or maybe you do. You know, that gives you more time. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Well, this is such a good one because I think a lot of us struggle with this. And if nothing else, it's a chance for you to take inventory right now. Yeah. Am I the person that doesn't insert myself enough? I let people steamroll me on dates mm-hmm. or am I the person that maybe talks a little too much and I need to go do the bathroom check? <laughs> <laughs> 
Perfect. Well, thank you. That was a great first question for our new series of Brunch Talks. Get those questions in. You can always email us, hello at datablepodcast.com. You can DM us on Instagram at datablepodcast is the handle. Or better yet, leave us a rating and review in Apple Podcasts. And just like this person who sent in this question, if you leave the question in the body of your review, we'll bump it up to the front of the queue so it gets answered even faster. Awesome. We'll see you next week. Bye. The Datable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media. Slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Datable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay datable. Mm-hmm.